So we are Section 9, and we did The Victors by Louis Elbel, written in, in 1898. Louis Elbel was both the composer and the lyricist for The Victors. Um, he was born in South Bend, Indiana in 1877. He later moved to Ann Arbor and spent pretty much the rest of his life there. He was one of six brothers and two sisters. He went on to Europe at age of six to study the violin. He came home with a zest for piano. He was considered a child prodigy and went on tour at age 12. <laughs> Elbel was a first generation college student at the University of Michigan and was a music student from 1896 to 1899. And he was additionally a member of the track team and tied the world record for the indoor 40 yard dash. In addition to composing the victors, um, uh, Louis Elbel also composed a lot of piano pieces, songs, and pieces for small orchestra and different or instrumentations. As a result of composing these pieces, he gained a reputation, and as a result, he was invited to perform with the Michigan Marching Band. And in June 1947, he was presented with a citation from the University Board of Regents congratulating him for his contributions to school spirit with the victors. Um, he was pretty humble about this. He was recorded saying, it was mine only for a few months. It is yours now. It belongs to Michigan. And who wouldn't want Michigan spirit? So um, the Victors itself was actually written in 1898 following the 1898 football conference championship. Uh, where the Wolverines won against University of Chicago, and then it was consequently dedicated to that 1898 football team. Elbel wrote these lyrics on the train at home because he was not happy with the song they sang after the win. Um, it wasn't victorious and upbeat enough for them. It is also a 23-piece arrangement for marching band. So the trio section, which we all 100% know, um, from the victors is believed to have been copied from The Spirit of Liberty, which is a piece composed by George Rosie, or also known as George Rosenberg. Um, so even though the piece wasn't written in 1899, it was premiered on April 5th. Um, Elbel conducted it himself, and it was for the show A Night Off. Uh, when it was, it was premiered on April 5th, and then subsequently three days later, it was also performed by John Philip Sousa's band. Uh, which generally overshadows the original premiere. Uh, so even though it's commonly believed to have been premiered on April 8th, it was actually premiered on April 5th. Um, this piece also has a history of being performed in World War I. Um, French and German military bands actually played an arrangement of the victors and um, during 1917 in captured Germany, um, as, the, um, as troops from Michigan were going out to fight, the American 125th Infantry played this. Um, in 2005, President Gerald Ford, being a graduate of the University of Michigan, uh, personally requested that the Michigan Marching Band play the victors at his funeral. And there's a picture there of his casket and the marching band there. And uh, the piece is also very frequently performed by the uh, Men's Glee Club here. So um, we obviously know the Victors is used to garner excitement, school spirit, and pride at games. And it is still performed at basically every uh, Michigan uh, sporting event to incite cheer and energize the crowd for victory. The phrase in the lyrics, Champions of the West, comes from the 1898 win against the University of Chicago. In addition to having the Wolverines win their first undefeated season in a while, it also made them winners of the Western Conference, which is where Champions of the West come from. The Western Conference later went on to become what we now know as the Big Ten. By repeating the word hail multiple times, we are in a sense pledging allegiance to the university and therefore creating a sense of unity and belonging to a larger group. So something to think about is that Michigan actually won this game against U Chicago by one point. 
So that brings up the question of what would have happened if we didn't win? And there are, um, yeah, you know? So there are actually some lyrics that we found in the Michigan Athletic Archives that suggest that maybe our fight song might have been different. And so it goes, hail to our alma mater, hail to dear old Ann Arbor, hail, hail to Michigan, the Athens of the West. So just something to think about. Or maybe we would have had varsity as our fight song too, you know, you never know. <laughs> Thanks for the class participation. That was awesome. Supporting your colleagues.